let's go. Yo, what's up? Welcome to the Zombies episode of the Joystick Show. Zombie. You know why? Oh. One, one, three. Oh, right. that, that's the number. Two, one, five. <laughs> ah, fuck. All right, we'll come God. back in two weeks Thanks for the, the zombies, zombies episode. Yeah, the Joystick Show. Chance is going to be we'll eating ass yes for that one. Welcome to, welcome to the zombie episode of the Joystick Show because it's still October, even though you're watching this in November. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. totally save that Halloween's one. in three days. Welcome to, welcome to the Joystick Show, bro. Welcome you know? to All Souls Day. Thanks for hanging out with us for another, another wonderful Wednesday. Yeah, I'm word. Bobby. Dylan. Joey. Jerry. And we're here to, uh, to, 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 to fucking speak some words. Probably in paragraph format. Yeah. Probably going to interject those words into probably a conversation. Probably going to cut each other off like now. They're yeah. not all real Don't words. do that, no, please. That was, that was really hard to get through in the, in, in the last edit. Yeah. Uh, before we talk about anything, you know you know, the, you know the spiel here. The gist. The gist. Is that with a J or a G? G. Q. Yo, damn, Hunter. That's a good question. Yeah, we're... <laughs> <laughs> oh, go, go close that, please. <laughs> Anyway, fucking besides my cat taking a dropping a deuce in the basement, uh, yes, you know, welcome to the Joystick Show. It'd help us a lot if you could subscribe to Team Joystick, and also if you could like this episode of the Joystick Show. You know, probably also also tell you to comment something down below so you can get involved as well. And uh, and yeah, that's that's, yeah. that's about that. Last thing I'm gonna ask you is if somebody can close that door. I was just about to ask that too. And then uh, and then we'll be set to go. All right. Shots the door is being open. Shots I just to all your doors being open. I just also <laughs> wanted to say, you know, like I mentioned earlier, this is the first podcast that's happening post October. It's fun yeah. to get through that. We had four really fun, spooky episodes of the Joystick Show, and I also just wanted to throw a shout out that episode 112, which came out last week, which was the Halloween special, had to be one of the funniest fucking episodes it was of pretty the Joystick good. Show I have seen it in a good. long, long time. If I may speak it, speak to that as the editor, but uh, yeah, we're, if you haven't checked that out, go watch that after this episode. Yeah. And then watch every episode that we've made after that in one sitting. It'll only take about 115 plus hours. So. Yeah, it'll be worth it. Anyway, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. But I, I mean, if we're being honest, at the top of the hierarchy, one of us went on a little vacation. One yeah. of us went on a little interesting vacation. Someone went to Firefest 2.0. Firefest 2.0, uh, yes. <laughs> so I, I want to hear what Joey's been up to, bud. Yeah. So yeah, I I am the one at the table that bought tickets to the When We Were Young Festival that was in Vegas. Yes. Way back in like February of 2022. It was a massively large festival with almost every single emo man, emo band, emo man. Yeah, emo <laughs> man. No, it was every single emo band you can imagine going to this festival. And that, they all went. They all went. No one canceled. They it was crazy cuz I I remember um in February they were just like, "Hey, we're having this big event and it's one day only so buy your tickets now and i was like on the like commenting like is this shit for real like what is yeah. this no one's heard of this no. is this for real yeah and like everyone thought to to interject uh everyone thought that like no one would show up no yeah i was no, like, I was gonna say even some people were like we're going to this like yeah. oh okay. no yeah even when it came out and the lineup was ridiculous like everybody immediately just had that gut feeling like this is something's uh -oh. gonna happen yeah. you know like this isn't but you know it looked pretty good so i when the day came to purchase the tickets i said fuck it i want to like see if this is real or not if it's a shit show i could say i witnessed the shit show if it's lit i could say i was lit i got my tickets I, I made it that it sold out like instantly that they extended it to a second day, Sunday. And then that sold out instantly that they extended it for next week. So this weekend, they're also doing it again. Um, so now fast forward, it's now October, the month of the, the festival. And my sister and I, we take a plane, we land. Uh, we did something first uh, Friday. We did Omega Mart, which was fun if you want me to go into that, but it's whatever. Fun, check it out. Omega Mart, trippy pics. Um, the festival... We woke up the next day, and this our taxi driver was talking to us like, oh, what did you do in Vegas while you were here? And I, we just said what we did. And he was like, you didn't go on the the Strip? You didn't go to Fairmont Street? And we were like, no. And then he was like, oh, next time you come, you should really go. And I look at my phone, and they posted something. They said the whole event is canceled. And I was like, no. Like, it almost didn't feel real. I had to reread that three times. Like, no. Like, what? And it was like, we're really sorry. We're canceling the concert. Due to uh, severe wind, their their like meteorologists are saying that the wind is going to be blowing really hard, and because a lot of our sets look like sails, it's going to blow things off the set, like 
instruments will come off the set, wires and stuff, and we don't want any one of our performers or audience members getting hurt. And I just remember like, shit. Uh, so I said, oh, take us to the strip. We're going to just walk around and find something to do, my sister and I. And when we arrived, there's just nothing but emo people just like yeah, everywhere. I can imagine. Everywhere, all looking sad, all like kind of side eyeing each other. We are all in the same boat, like, yeah, like okay, yeah. <laughs> and it's it was. I wanted to take a video, but every time I like I was taking a video, like I got non emo people in the video, so it would, didn't do it justice. But literally, there were so many. It was like Vegas was like an emo town. Jesus Christ! And actual was... actual emo too. Not only emo <laughs> in appearance, but now actually upset that they came yeah. Out. Oh yeah. So there <laughs> was, was a lot. I was about of to say, comments. what was the uh, what was the ratio of normal haired colored people to dyed haired colored people? It wasn't as bad as you think. Uh, mainly because there was also people that had like streaks of purple and not yeah. full purple. So is that what is? I think that counts. That counts. That counts. It does count. Hair. Okay, so then there was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Cause that's the thing. You can't have like full neon purple nowadays, but like if you have a little yeah. bit of purple, full neon purple is more like indie pop. Now. Not even that. You look like a crack dealer, low key. <laughs> um, but no, there was a lot of people. One person said, "If we, uh, if we all windmill in one direction, maybe it would level up the speed of the wind." <laughs> Sounds like some fucking Joey's pool logic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, weird. Um. And yeah, just mad people upset. Some po- someone posted on the Twitter that someone dressed up like the marching guy, like spent hours in his hotel room oh, yeah, dressing yeah. up as like the marching band man from Black Parade, oh, and he's man. sitting on the the stoop like sad. Oh, damn. so my Tatiana and I didn't know what to do, and this local like bar kind of like took the opportunity and was like emo night, yeah, uh, emo night. We're we're having an emo night. So mm-hmm. Tatiana and I bought tickets because we were like, fuck it, what else are we gonna do? We're getting a refund back, thankfully, but um. Then more and more bands were just getting together and like, hey, we're playing at this bar and we're playing at that bar. We're playing at that bar just to like appease people. Yeah. And they didn't want to leave either. I'm sure they were there the whole night. They were yeah, like, we're... oh, we're going to be here. We might so as well. my sister and I were going to the Strat, which I think is a hotel to see the the strip. to see a few bands, Hawthorne, Hawthorne Heights and Red Jumpsuit Apparatus. And uh, it was free. They were announcing it's a free concert. And then Wonder Years, a band that I like a bit better, announced that they were doing a bar uh, show at a bar. So I told the driver take us there instead, and when we got there, the the Strat one, the free concert, had so many people they had to get security involved, and there's just like a bunch of officers like herding these like emo people into like a spot, and everyone's like arguing and like freaking out. It was a mess of a day, and you wow. could see it on everyone. Like what? Well, the how fuck much was crying that? happened? <laughs> um, you see people on the verge of tears. The only person I saw that was like bawling was like these two girls in a McDonald's. Yeah, that's, they, that's where you go. That's where you go to cry. That's where you go to cry. Yeah, I know. I oh, would shit. honestly, I would want to do something as far away from emo culture as possible. If that uh, happened, if that happened, I'd have, to you? I'd, have, I'd, have a, I'd have a sick taste in my mouth, and I'd be like, I'm going to a fucking hip hop show, yeah. Yeah. strip club. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gambling. I'm doing a magic all this show. Other shit. Yeah, yeah, I gambled. Exactly. Yeah, I gambled with Tatiana for a bit. Um, I had to laugh. Like, part of it, I was surrounded by so many sad people and so yeah. many people, like, jokingly angry. That's well, funny. It was almost funny to me. <laughs> like, like this shit can't be real. Like, <laughs> like, I'm in the same exact boat as you, but this shit is just ironically, like, that's this is just too funny to me. Like, this is ridiculous. Uh, Tatiana and I instead went into a smash room. We broke shit, which was really fun. We were just throwing stuff, breaking stuff. They gave us glass bottles to smash, and we let, let out some, like, frustration out of that low-key. Honestly, a good thing to do, to be honest. No, oh, yeah, we. I shouted them out, and like mad people started going there. Now yeah. they probably ran out of glass bottles to break. They were like, "Shit!" <laughs> I don't think they ran out of glass bottles in Las Vegas. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, I got a funny feeling they got those for days. They to got come. them for days. <laughs> There's an abandoned hotel. That's just. We went instead to a bar, that bar show, and the DJ Loki gave me like someone in your family vibes. Like he was, he had a lid cap, he had a red blazer and a black shirt, and he was just like very energetic. And I was like, this guy feels like Bobby's uncle or something. He was mad energetic. Bobby's uncle who moved to Vegas. He sounds like a guy who tries to sell light up toys at the mall. Like what the fuck? Where he's, <laughs> yeah, like he like gave he's off sick with this glow yo yo. Like yo, what's up? Come he gave off out, that vibe of this like yeah. Immediately started so like yo fuck when we were young. Am I right? And everyone's like yeah. No, no. And it was almost like because this is the bar that like emo night like they randomly did it. Um, it was almost kind of like he was trying to find the vibe of the like he was like he played like 
Spice Girls and was like, yeah, when we were young and people were like, mm. no, dude, dude, do you not get like, you not see what was the like people... okay, uh, this and then he played Blink and people were like, yeah, and then he played My Chemical, yeah, and then he was like, and this and he played some other song that I didn't know and everyone was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> he then played this like newer song that was like, uh, he played ukulele. If I sing it, Dylan might know it. Yeah. I don't know, but it was like the most prissiest song ever, and Tatiana knew it and was singing it, and I was like, what the is this like i look around me to all these people in black looking like they ready to like make a pit and there's a song like a ukulele and a high-pitched voice guy like oh uh oh uh oh and everyone's like what the someone behind me went yo what blink song is this like what what is this wait so people were vibing or only tati Tatiana was the only one that I saw vibing. Oh, okay. And I when I told to say, Tatiana I... that, she was very defiant and was like, no, there were other people that were other girls singing. Yeah, 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 I saw yeah, this yeah. Like, <laughs> Tatiana, it was you. It was you were literally... the party, Tatiana. No, that's so funny. I was like, I thought people were like into it. To be like, oh, emo people, we've grown. Like When we were younger, we liked this. When we were young, but now we're old, we like this old like yeah. ukulele shit. Probably. <laughs> I don't know. They played Miley Cyrus, Seven Things I Hate About You, which was low-key. Like, this guy was moshing really hard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Too, yeah. <laughs> oh god but um after a while like six songs back to back where i was like i don't know these and these don't feel like the vibe that i came to vegas for i told tatiana let's bounce like this kind of fucking sucks um and then the next day that's when the anger sit in like I, the whole saturday i just couldn't help but laugh and be in the camaraderie of all the other emos this one guy was smart he brought his electric guitar and had like his hat for tips and just played a bunch of emo songs in the street. Mm, that's smart. And I was that's like, smart. that's pretty smart. That was pretty smart. He had like a, his phone set up on like a holder. And he was just like looking up the song on the go. Like, hey, what song you want me to sing? Okay, that one? Okay. And he was just playing it. And I was like, oh, that's a vibe. That's cool. <laughs> Sunday morning, I woke up. And the idea that these people are going today bothered me like i was like that's when the yeah, anger set that in. there's a second like, day of the concert that this one is okay especially no when you're i'm talking to so many people who are oh man i came here you know this was my only day i have people dog sitting my dogs were from alaska this and that and this Shit. other guy that's like oh well our jobs are very flexible and I, I like i could leave whenever the fuck i want and you know i actually bought two day tickets so like i'm still going tomorrow so there's a, and i was like fuck you should have gone with that guy <laughs> yeah. what buy two tickets <laughs> yeah Fuck him. No. Yeah. He's an asshole. Bob, you I don't know. What he did. Then you could have been like the same thing. Like, oh, you know, me too. You could have been the jerky guy. <laughs> we were talking about where we live, and since we brought up New York, they were like, oh, it's expensive. I said, it actually is getting pretty expensive. And we're talking about, like, you know, I don't know if I'm going to be there forever, this and that. And then fucking the people again from California, they were like, well, we live in California, and it's moderately around the same price as New York. So we feel like if we were to ever move down there, we, we could. This and that, and I was like, "Who fucking asked you?" No one asked. It's you. they're from California. You asked them. Yeah. <laughs> so they, if they're from Cali, they're, they're gonna from, let you know. Californians, they just give me some weird, weird vibes, man. Mm -hmm. Weird vibes. It's like New York energy is like I'm main character, but I'm gonna do my own thing. Cali is like main character, but I'm gonna let you know. I'm gonna let you know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna publish it. Yeah. They were annoying, and the fact that I was on the plane ride and they were announcing like doors are open and they're showing people enter, and I thought of Cali going. I was like. <laughs> Fuck them. Fuck those people. Fuck those people. And then there were also the comments were fucking mean. Like the internet is mean, but like everyone that was going Sunday were like, haha, Saturday big mad. Like this and that. I was like, Fuck you guys. <laughs> like getting me more angry. I unfollowed them. I was like, I can't deal with these fucking people. I so was Vegas fun? Uh that Friday I went was fun. We went to Omega Mart and the largest dispensary, which was really cool. Um I got THC infused soda. What flavor? Lemon lime. It's what what safe. would you choose? Pretty All right, safe. what's what's the best THC uh, soda flavor grape, then? Maybe grape. It sounds great. Close. Orange. Mm. Those both sound yep, pretty yep, good. Yep, yep, yep. I don't know. I don't know about orange. I'll fight for grape, but I don't know about orange. Orange every day of the week. Grape's a solid number two. I'll give you that. Lemon lime is like Sprite. I like that lemon lime. It's like soury taste. Look, I'm not about to diverge into a soda conversation <laughs> here, but there's Sprite <laughs> and then there's lemon lime soda. There's no, there's, they're not similar. You're right. You're right. Okay. You're totally right Sprite's about a that. whole different thing. Okay. But um, Sprite holds that flavor up. <laughs> I feel like I've been talking for fucking ever. Last thing, Omega Mart. No, keep talking. Yeah. <laughs> Omega yeah, Mart. Keep talking. Okay. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> Bobby's like, all right. <laughs> Tatiana was telling me about this thing when she was in Vegas. She said, oh, my God, there's an Omega Mart in Vegas. And I was like, what yeah, is what that? Yeah, what is that shit? Apparently, it started off as just like a bunch of bugged out sketches about uh, a supermarket that is in connections with in intergalactic like products. And, and Tatiana was like, it was really, it was very popular that it became a pop-up shop in New York. And then a pop up shop in Vegas and got so popular that they bought all, like a whole half of a building to make a whole supermarket. And oh, when yeah, we man. went, um, we got our tickets. We went in in the supermarket. Everything's bugged out. The produce section, like they're moving. They're weird things. They have they show the inside is made out of metal. Like you open a pear and inside the pear is metal and it was weighted. Um, <laughs> they had like weird cereal brands, weird soda brands. Um, they had a pharmaceutical section of just pills that were just bugged out. I bought a, a pills that said, uh, sit longer, blink less pills. There was pills that like infinite genders where you could just have infinite. So what's genders actually pills. in the bottles? Uh, I think it's like peppermint candy. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> how, how much did you pay for that? It was like, maybe like eight bucks. Oh, that's not that bad. I, you know, I, I can't really say anything. Uh, oh, I do have to ask you a question though. What's up? As somebody who firmly hates the city of Las Vegas, like how expensive was Las Vegas? It was expensive, right? It also stupid. it also is fucking expensive when you realize you get to Vegas and you don't consider all the Ubers you have to take because you don't know how to drive and there's no buses because everything's in the fucking desert. So I'm constantly Ubering to and from from all these bars to all these things to like my hotel. It was annoying. Like you I was like, walk the damn, strip, man, that's part of the fun. The strip is the fun, most fun part. You gotta like and uh, seeing everyone. Place? Fat Tuesdays, you get a large fucking drink, and you just walk down the strip and go to the next fucking thing. I like, I'm down to go to Vegas with you guys, but two I'm days. not going for more than two days. Two days. <laughs> I think I think Vegas for more than two days is that's my is rule. I'm never enough. going back to Las Vegas for more than two days. Only yeah. reason I'd go back to Vegas for more is if we like go from Vegas somewhere else. Like if we go to like fucking Colorado or fucking Cali or something. But yeah. Nah, no more. No more than two days. So yeah, that concert fucking annoyed me. I got my refund back but i still paid mad money for my hotel and flight so i was like this is whack this sucked this really sucked i did get this hoodie i like it it's from the hotel i stood at the orleans and on the back i don't know if i could even turn it is that on the strip that hotel close it says voodoo onto others before they voodoo onto you it's not what i asked but cool yeah said, is that hotel on the strip uh no yeah i was about to say i don't Remember that hotel? But it was cool. Dope, dope. Cool. You been Vegas isn't in Vegas. That's my cool fun fact of the day. Vegas isn't in Vegas. It's in paradise. Okay. The strip is not in Las oh, really? Vegas. Is like where the people live. Gotcha. Yeah. Ah. But you know, cool. no one cares. Yeah. The shirts don't say paradise. <laughs> it doesn't sound as catchy. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's, just, it's a. It's it's for tax reasons. It's like oh, yeah. we can have prostitutes. Hee hee hee. You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, speaking of prostitutes, no, but uh. I went up to Lake Compounds in Connecticut. Compounds. Yeah. Yes. Which uh, Jose let me know doesn't sound real, which I agreed. It does sound really fake. Uh, but yeah, it's like uh, basically like a shitty version of like Fright Fest. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was fun. Uh, my favorite ride, which is called Boulder Dash, which is a roller coaster that goes through a forest. It That's was closed sick. down. Oh. Yeah, it was closed down for maintenance. But uh, every other ride was open. I went on all those, got scared by some children, you know, at the haunted houses got scared by children yeah like there was like actors in the haunted house and one where of them. they were child actors yeah that's bugged out yeah <laughs> i mean they, they were like they were like 14 Take some cameras and do a raid you know what i mean they were like 14 15 yeah. like they were like i feel like that's children. the age range where you're you think i'm gonna be a scared actor is yeah. really cool yeah, yeah <laughs> it was weird. like because it, it's like you can't have like a because you, you have to be 13 plus to get on the ride so, like, if you have, like, a little kid, it's like, yo, this guy's going to be fucking horrified at these <laughs> like, people bleeding and stuff. But, yeah, you know, it's a cute little uh, amusement park up there. Watched some uh, nice, uh, like, all the trees are changing colors and stuff like that. That's so, like, beautiful. I it love was it. just, like, everything was, like, Pretty orange, trees. too. And did you get a pumpkin latte while you were at it? No, Boom. I did not. Did I got a post some just girly things and wear a, a, no, a, a, wolf, I did. a wolf scarf. Where was it? At the Renaissance Fair, I did have a, uh, what, what was it? A uh, chider. 
A chider. Yeah, with your hugs. Which was a apple cider and a chai tea. Combined. Bro, one day mm-hmm. people just come to my house in like typical like <gasps> leggings fall white and white t- attire, please. I will, yeah. Please, bro. Okay. The flannel, Honestly, the boots. No, but like I'll wear like the jacket and the hat. Like bro, in November, yeah, wear, like the brunch, hat, the, the boots. Hat. Hat. In November, when, when, is the, when is the fall podcast, bro? I'll do it uh, too, homie. Let's go. You got to be like coffee shop. Yeah, like, you know. Like, Starbucks, shop, yeah. Hipster. Brunch attire, bro. We're going to sit from like, like the Pico, little. Like the glass coffee top. Fucking machines! Mm. Oh, it's gonna be yeah. That's gonna oh, that's Bobby, gonna be the Bobby, It's gonna be from a cabin. <laughs> like where the fuck are we? <laughs> it's like hey, no, we're trying to do it. You're like this doesn't work. It's like Bobby, we don't have Wi-Fi. <laughs> we're in the foot. <laughs> but uh, yeah, after that, I we drove from that place in Connecticut to New Haven. I went to an Ethiopian restaurant. Ethiopian's the best. Went to an Ethiopian restaurant in New Haven, Connecticut. New Haven, Connecticut. It, first that's, off. It's first off, New doesn't Haven, sound real. New Haven, Connecticut. Do you know what New Haven, Connecticut is? It's where Yale is. Yeah. Yes, but it's also very hood, which I didn't know. I didn't know. Wait, that. It's, like, it's pretty know nice. That. But we were outside. It was like literally like the whole courtyard after like 7 p.m. just becomes a whole place of homeless people. Yeah. Right. Uh, we were walking behind a group of like four hood men. One of them may have had a gun on them. You know, <laughs> very 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 nice stuff. But uh, we were in like the downtown area and uh, the Ethiopian food. We guys we got to get Ethiopian food. It's fucking incredible. Nice. Eat with your hands. I'm down. They put everything on the bread, so you just kind of like. I'm I'm trying to enter that way of like eating new things. You it's know? good. It's good. It's like just it's like a nice hearty stew. Still gotta go to fucking rolling roaster, bro. We never did that. Get some soup. I want the roll. <laughs> I mean, we didn't go so to roll. Back. Yeah, I know, but I went. Okay, good for you. <laughs> it was really good too, Bobby. I didn't want to interject you. <laughs> I didn't want to interject you. You could have. I don't want to do that. We can't do that. Um. Anyway, so no, <laughs> no, no. Nicole is um, she's trying what? to get into uh. What? <laughs> All right, she's she she wanted to be a VFX makeup artist for Blood Manor. Yeah. And they were like, "Do you oh, want to be an no. actress? Do you want to be a scarer?" And she was like, "No, I want to do makeup." And they're like, "We're really low on scarers, so we're like trying to get people to do it." Mm-hmm. So she brought it out to me. She was like, "You're an actor. Do you want to be a scare?" And I'm like. I th- now I'm, I'm. It sounded fun when I was a teen, but now it doesn't. Like maybe on the as a side, if I didn't wasn't a I had so much things on my plate, maybe. Uh, I imagine but, like Joey like flashback to the, our, when say, we went to Black Man. Say, remember, he's we like, went to Blood she's Man. like, do you want to be an actress? And about Joey's like, huh? Just the <laughs> you remember that? Remember that night? Uh, what our night at Blood Manor? Blood Manor? Yeah. The only thing I remember. No, bro. There was so much shit to remember <laughs> from that night. Are you kidding me? I remember the waiting room looked like heaven. And all these scandalous girls were dressed as angels. And when it was our turn to go in, they grabbed us and they were like, oh, you don't belong here. And they pushed us through the first door, which was like hell. They didn't scare us. They just bullied us. Like That was the whole thing. Like They're supposed to jump out and scare you. There's this one gay dude that was like, look, it's Menudo. Look, <laughs> Menudo came into the haunted house. Look, they're all dressed no, perfectly. And we're like, the fuck is We paid money for this. Bro. That's why they need scarers. They only have condescending gay men. <laughs> it, was, it was me, Jerry, Joey, Jessica, and Armando. It was the five of us. And I remember, Jessica was there? I don't yeah, remember I Jessica. Remember Jessica. Weird crew. And, uh, I think she did go. She did go. And your mom and Tati were there, but they didn't go with us. They were just around, and they were gonna meet okay. up with us. Yeah. I worked near Blood. My, my old my old job was down the yeah. block. Like but I remember away. that. I remember them fucking making fun of us, and then I remember us leaving Blood Manor and going to eat at that fucking <laughs> restaurant where those two guys got into the fight at the cashier. Oh yeah, my like, restaurant. No, it was yeah, like it, it's was funny. Definitely there. Yeah, it's funny because like I work <laughs> near there now, so it's on. Um, I don't remember this. It was on, a it was a pizzeria. And it's on no, it's on Eighth Avenue. And I, it's got to be like between forty seventh and eighth, something or, like or that. Or it's kind of like one of those like m- like hybrid deli yeah, no, it's restaurant, a, no, like it's sandwich a, it's a food place. court. It's an yeah, indoor yeah. food court. Oh, and it had okay. like a Blimpies and a Church's Chicken uh, and a Chinese okay. restaurant, but it's just on Eighth Avenue. Like you yeah. walk into it, and it's like you're literally in like a QCM food, like okay. smaller thing. But we went in, and I forgot what we ordered, and we sat in the back, and we were eating it all together. And at this point, we had reconvened. It was like the people who were at Blood Manor plus your mom and Tati. And we must have been 15, right? Something like that. Oh, that this is, is a while ago. Yeah, and see why this is cloudy. This and is this, 10 years ago. This, this dude walks in, and he's at the f- <laughs> he's at the f- rest at the register. I'm for the sitting f- at the front with Je- with like Jessica. For, like, no, I'll, pretty I'll t- close to bro. the front. I remember you were closest because we, yeah, we were all I'll, talking to you I'll and tell Jessica you right now, about it. We were in the back of the restaurant. All of us were in the back. Me, Jerry, and I, all I remember is me and Jerry were facing the front of the restaurant. Yeah. And we were at one table, and on the other table were Tati... 
Yvette and Joey was at our table, but he was looking the other way. Yeah. So point is, again, not to even get this descriptive, a guy comes into the restaurant and he stands at the cashier at the first place of the food court mm. and he gets into some verbal altercation with the guy on the, in, that's yeah. behind the counter. They get into this whole argument. They're like pushing each other. And at one point, the guy grabs like the tip jar and like launches it at the fucking wall <laughs> and like change goes everywhere. Yeah. And as soon as that happened, Yvette... Jumped out of her seat, <laughs> grabbed Tatiana, grabbed Joey, and ran for the bathroom. <laughs> it was so fast that, like, me, Jerry, Jessica, Armando, like, we're looking at the cash, like, bing, and we look back, and they're gone. And we're like, <laughs> over, they, they over fucking, coins? Yes. <laughs> I don't remember this. I was terrified, bro. Like, the whole thing exploded, and you guys ran to the bathroom. We were, we were low-key, like, what the fuck? And I remember Armando, Armando was like, okay, we'll leave. We'll go. We'll get out of here. But I was like, oh, my God. I don't remember this. Yep. That's bugged out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Man, I was a, that was a shitty experience at that Blood Manor. I remember I had a, I had a barbecue pizza. The ones with the the peppers and the onions on it. Mm. That's what I had that day. <laughs> that's what I remember. That's what a I good had. fucking memory. No, they actually Blood Manor was so shit that they moved the location and then now it's worse apparently. It. Yeah, it's like down, downtown. I was, I was also gonna say a uh, side thing when you mentioned Nicole. I was talking to Dylan about this before uh, when we hung out. I was on the train and I was going through my like notifications and I get the YouTube no- notifications. So it was like the comments from the last episode and I got a new subscriber for, from Joystick and I look it up and it was N Quellar and I did the the they put the ones and the ones together yeah. and it was Nicole, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So I was like, oh cool. And I saw her YouTube. She has like the guitar covers. She does? Yeah, I, she has like I, four guitar covers wow, on YouTube. Yeah. So I was looking through them and I was genuine, like I told Dylan, I was like, way better than I could do. Like, you know, I'm still Actual, super beginner. Yeah. Like she's one playing for one them. good covers. Yeah. And I, I played like one video and I'm watching it on the train and she's like shredding low key and she's she's doing the whole song and I'm like, Oh, this is fucking rad. And then I made the mistake of going into the comments. And it has like three comments, and one of the comments is like this old white dude, and he's like, "Cool, but wrong." <laughs> Third video I've watched of this today, and they're all wrong. Good attempt, though. Homie is <laughs> oh and his name is like God. Atomic Fetus. <laughs> he's just like this old white dude, and I was like, I showed Dylan, and we were like, "What the fuck is this guy?" <laughs> Imagine being that guy though, being the being the old white guy commenting on amateur guitar yeah. covers and being like, "This is fucked up." So dude. that was I've fun to watch. Was wrong. Also, for Wrong. what it's worth, every single one of your girlfriend's guitar cover videos has more than like any video we've ever put out in terms of views. I think the lowest is like two hundred fifty. Oh, oh yeah, wow. crazy. Music does music it's does so it. well yeah. on YouTube. If you think music. about it, everybody always looks up like song cover. And they want they yeah. I I low key love doing that. You find some like gems of like this sounds better than the original song. Let's just start titling the Joystick Show <laughs> Unboxing the PlayStation Five or some shit like that. <laughs> you got him. But uh, then you also see some covers of people that you're like, ooh, that was not a good cover. (laughs) I was like, that (laughs) That was not a good cover. I don't remember what the song was, but the same (laughs) thing. Like, I was super into a song, and I looked up on YouTube. I was like, da-da-da-da-da, cover. And it was like some guy with glasses and acoustic guitar on the floor. And he's playing the guitar well, but his singing voice is terrible. And in my head, like, I'm just like, oh, at least he plays the guitar well. Again, Made the mistake of scrolling down to the comments. Video has like 15 comments. Top comment. Spooky chords. Fucking Joey ripping this guy's asshole in half. <laughs> Me? Yeah, you were like, yeah, man. I, w- I, w- I would just stick to the guitar. I remember yeah! Yeah! And I was oh, like, no God. fucking way. Joey commented on this video. You were like not there, not even in the conversation. Yo. And you were the top comment. And I was like, this fucking asshole. Yo, oh, shit. That That's crazy. Oh my god, yo, that shit made me cry. No, I feel like there's another person that's me, man. Yeah, I don't right? remember. I don't remember that freaking <laughs> my mother dragging us to the bathroom. I don't remember that. Just Bro, who, Joey. Joey went through a hate phase where he just comment hated on everything. What, that's, what like me, that's like when you go through like an Instagram comment thread and you see Jose's comment is like mad. Yeah. <laughs> That's it's like funny. 16 replies. Every He's time fucking... I do that, it reminds me that Joey, C- uh, Jose, secretly like socially active, like more so than <laughs> yeah. I am. Because I'm like, oh shit, Jose comments on things and talks to people. Jose has conversations other people yeah. for yeah. hours. Me too, but like not that, not that. I crazy. comment on nothing. I comment on like I've, I've gotten into like I've started hockey arguments, like hundreds of, th- <laughs> I, and I I'm just like, it. and I was just like, I just asked who this person was. Yeah, like, jeez, guys, like. <laughs> Because by the time you get to like fifty replies, you're not even talking about somebody's the same like. Thing I'm just trying playing. to win. Yeah. I want, I'm playing the game. Yeah. 
I guess something something also fun that we could swing it into yeah. is uh, is, a, is a cool movie that came out. I mean, honestly, this would be a cool opportunity to talk about DC in general for a few minutes because District of Columbia, baby, the District yeah. of Columbia, man, they, they've had a lot of stuff going for them. The Washington uh, Monument, the Lincoln Monument, Jefferson uh, Memorial, the, the Mall, Mon- the, the, Mon- the, the, the the what the what is it called? The National Mall, right? Right? The Smithsonian, the all Smith- the other museums. <laughs> And uh, I went on a whole fucking tangent. I forgot. Oh, DC. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Shut up, Dylan. Stop. Stop. The right an- or what is acronym is uh, Detective Comics, right? Shout out to Joey on his phone mid podcast. I'm listening. He's fucking killing it over there. I'm listening. <laughs> DC Young. No, uh, me and Jerry went to go see Black Adam. Yeah. Black Adam. Adam. Fuck, I gotta say, you know, that was another movie that people kind of came out. The reviews weren't so great. I'll admit, you know, it's not the best superhero movie that's ever come out, but I give it a solid 7 out of 10. That shit was fun as all hell. That was a really, really fun yeah. superhero. I'm, I think you'd agree, right? That was a good movie. Had some real, I thought the fight scenes were super dope. Like, the action scenes in general were sick. Honestly speaking, what I thought was funny is, like, I told Jerry, a lot of the stuff that I had problems with in the movie were just, like, the nerdy, like, comic book stuff that they yeah. changed, like, in mm-hmm. lore-wise. And it was funny because... One of the bigger, uh, one of the bigger, uh, the power scaling. Yeah, one of the bigger, <laughs> what you might call it, highlights that the movie was getting was Pierce Brosnan's performance as uh, Kent Nelson, Doctor Fate. Yeah, which was really really cool. But then another big, con- uh, well, not controversy, but a lot of flack that the movie's getting from is like how the movie treated Doctor Fate and how, because Doctor Fate is supposed to be one of the more like powerful characters in the DC canon. And without spoiling too much, because I do want this to be a spoiler free talk. They just like he's a little pussy. He's it's not he's that he, not as strong as he should be. It's not even that. It's the fact that uh, with, well, it's not spoiling uh, without spoiling it. The mask that Doctor Fate uses, the mask of Naboo, is the mask that gives him the power. In fact, when Kent puts the mask on, he's not even Kent Nelson. He's just possessed okay. by the spirit of Naboo. It's kind of like the mask, but he's yeah. just not himself. He's he's literally a god, or, 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 or like being piloted by the god in the mask. Oh, I see. But without spoiling too much, like the movie ends and. There's really not like too much to go from like what's gonna happen with the mask or what's gonna happen with the character in general, right. and it was just kind of like, why would you introduce something so big to not do anything with it? And I was like, whatever, you know, I'll leave it in their hands. They probably got something. To go you know, it's funny. It. I saw a YouTube video about like Doctor Fate and being in this, so I was like gonna ask about it. I haven't watched it yet though. It's from that uh, what's that channel that you told me about? Variant. Yeah. Yeah. They have a video on that. Doctor Fate's one of the cooler characters. He's like uh, he's a Lord of Order. So he's uh Law and Order. Law and Order. Yeah, you got it. The face. Fuck. Me. Did that camera stop right there? It did. Okay. Oh, one second. One second. We're gonna beep, talk about beep, Black Adam. Lettuce. Yeah. We're just gonna carefully get out of the table. What is that from? <laughs> beep beep lettuce. I forgot. Do you guys remember? What's, what's Black Adam from? Black Adam. Like, did he appear in other DC stuff? Oh, Black Adam. Yeah, because I never heard of him. So he's a villain to Shazam, Captain Marvel. Oh. But in uh, recency, motion was canceled due to the limitation of the writing speed of this card. That's bullshit because I've recorded 112 episodes on this fucking. That happened on that one too, like 10 episodes ago as well. Give me a fucking second. It wouldn't be a podcast without technical difficulties. But they're like they're like two they're like two halves of the same coin. Because okay. they get this, they get their power from the same source, right? They get, they both get the Shazam thing, this the rule where they say Shazam, they get their powers taken away and given. Okay. And um, there's like at the Shazam, they each start for like they each stand for like a power and like right. a, like an Egyptian god, I think, right? Oh. So. And that's why Doctor Fate also has the yeah god. Thing. So in the movies for Shazam, they each get their own powers. Oh. There's six kids and they each have to Shazam and they, they well each they get, share the power yeah they're like super power rangers they, they each get their own they color put their hands in the pot of look just to give a TLDR powers. of this right Black Adam in the original comics like super super classic days used to be a big time villain and then in the new fifty two he got reworked into kind of an anti hero that helps the, the okay. heroes and certain things like so that. he was bad but now he's yeah. sort of not only that the Rock has been penned to play this character for literally like seventeen years it's been that long that he's supposed to oh wow really Black are Adam. you able to like differentiate the rock from black adam like when he's on scene do you think oh this is black adam or are you just like oh I'll look admit, it's dwayne the rock johnson it's the rock. The be- no no i'll admit at the beginning it's definitely like oh the rock 
rock. But I feel like it, it just kind of fades in like every other movie. Like you stop kind of thinking about the actor. Yeah. And honestly, like we had that discussion a couple episodes back about like is the rock really that good of an actor? Yeah. You could say and that about is, any like you could say that about any actor. Can though. you smell what the rock is? Cooking? I just figured like more because he's like the blockbuster guy. Yeah. Like his whole thing is not necessarily he's not trying to sell movies. But what I did say is that if there's one thing that the rock does is he makes movies for the fans. Like he makes yeah. movies for the audience, mm-hmm. which I like a lot. Of he he really looks like that. a a fun guy. Like yeah. he does. Like, like a lot of the interviews and behind the scenes of the movie season, he's just kind of like Josh. It was cool. They were like talking. Uh, they were talking to Noah Centennial, who plays Adam Smasher in the movie. He's kind of like a new up and coming young actor. And the name sounds mad familiar. Yeah, he's in like a bunch of he's stuff. On. They asked them uh, like what it was like working with The Rock, and he obviously had nothing but good things to say about like because he's like an idol for him and stuff. But like one thing that he said, which I thought was really interesting, is he was like, "The Rock is not only such a genuine person." He was like the the rock that you see on like his Instagram is like literally who he is in person. Like he's that just real. Like he's always himself. And I was like, that's kind of dope. I could see that. He reminds me of my uncle. My uncle kind of acts like him. Uncle Rock. Yeah, Uncle Rock. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Is Black Adam bald? No, he has like a little widow's peak. Yeah, 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 yeah. But fucking uh, he has story. one strain of hair that just like <laughs> sticks in the middle. Long story short, head. I thought the movie was a lot of fun. I thought it was a really good step for DC. One thing I will spoil, only because it's been spoiled by The Rock in a bunch of TV interviews, is that <laughs> Henry Cavill makes a reappearance as Superman in the post credit scene, right? Ooh. which is really cool. And uh, he actually made a video, it might have come out yesterday or today, but Henry Cavill made like a video on his phone and shared it to social media where he was basically like making his official like announcement that he's coming back to Superman and he was I'm like not fucking leaving. Yeah, he was like what you <laughs> saw in uh in Black Adam is just the beginning of a lot of stuff that we have in the works and, and shit. Yeah. So my the to end this half of the discussion, Black Adam was good. DC's making some good moves. I think you should definitely watch it. And it was one of the more fun superhero movies that I've seen in a long time. Do you think this is DC's comeback? Yeah. This is DC's yeah, comeback. Yeah, I think it's imminent. It is. And it, uh, it leads me into this. And last thing I'll say is this is a little bit uh it's it's a little audacious but i think i had more fun watching black adam than i did like thor the, the newest one that came i out. agree i yeah i didn't I, I it was fun but i was i left like uh but i could have not paid to see this movie exactly but to move it on to the, the second thing i wanted to mention is uh is dc has finally found like their kevin feige which is really like exciting and it was a person that i called a super long time ago on the podcast dc has officially brought in james gunn to advise them for i think it's a perfect idea yeah it is i think it's a perfect people are idea. even talking about the idea of james gunn being the person to eventually in like eight to ten years being the one to do the marvel dc crossover <laughs> like to have the marvel dc event Word. that would be high that'd be high which if, they've done in comics like i hope thing, james possible. gunn is the person to do that yeah. go like, down in history it seems like the but honestly of... like the one the one reason i thought james wouldn't do it at first was because he's a director and kind of like director's things is they don't like to be held down to one thing they want to be able to branch out and do different stuff but i think everybody most people agree james gunn has got to be one of the best if not the best director when it comes to superhero movies guardians one guardians two the suicide squad and not only that the trailer for the guardians of the galaxy holiday special came out a couple days ago and it actually looks really fucking good yeah i don't know what i was expecting i was expecting it so to be like i have a, a question yeah. so what like what what form of like video is that like how long is it like the special yeah well marvel's starting to do like holiday yeah so it's like straight to D- disney plus yeah. right so they just did where like an hour night. long they did what? They just did Werewolf by Night, which what is, is that? on Disney Plus. It's like a Halloween themed. I would. Uh, how long is that? Special presentation. I think it's like fifty minutes to an hour. Okay, that's like what that I would assume. Monster High stuff you watch. And yeah, it's cool. like a black and white old old vaudevillian style horror Ooh. that that actually takes place in the MCU and introduces something called the Bloodstone, which is cool. But they're making another one in, in, at Christmas for the Guardians of the Galaxy. And they announced it like years yeah. ago, but in my head, you know, knowing the Guardians, I just kind of figured it was going to be like your typical like cheesy, cheesy, right? Maybe like We're a song the Christmas or something planet. like that. But it actually kind of furthers the narrative of Guardians, which is cool. It's actually about how uh, Star Lord is seriously depressed after the death of Gamora, and how the Guardians want to cheer him up. And the only way that they know so how pre End Game, it's post End Game, like it's after all the events. It's, yeah. it's furthering oh, but the story. It, the new Gamora is not on their team. She's not even in Thor There's... four. She's just gone. I could have no sworn there's a new Gamora. No, she like they, she comes back when they like do the snap or whatever. But I get they, she they, doesn't they, remember him. Yeah, but so she's not part of the team. But I guess she got. I you know you know what I think it is. I think she technically got snapped away since she's part of Thanos' army. I think that might have been part of the spiel. 
Really? I yeah. thought that the, it was that the Soul Stone doesn't, the snap doesn't bring it back because she was the Soul Stone. Because she was back for the final she, fight. She, she, bro- she was there, back right? and she punched Peter because Peter tried to kiss her. Right. Because all her memories are gone. But remember, it's because it's the, the Gamora from the old time. Yes. And when they snapped the stone, it was to get rid of Thanos' army. So and that was probably got rid of Gamora. And to further it, I don't want to stay on this for too long, but uh, in Thor 4, when they introduced the Guardian, she's not with them. I could have sworn I saw her. She's Man. not. The nebula is with them. Mantis is nebula with them. Is, but, yeah. on, nebula not. is. But fucking uh, it, the Guardians movie is about how Star Lord is like depressed that Gamora's gone and that they want to cheer Lord. him up. And the only way that they know how to cheer him up is they look like up what Christmas is on Earth and they want to like, re- replicate Christmas for. Is it even Christmas or they're just like look at this happy holiday? No, on like Earth. they try their best to like replicate. No, but it is it like then, in the month of December? Or is time not even? I don't, Joey, it's a trailer. I don't. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> I thought, like, that's kind of funny that they're but just kind of like, hey, look at this holiday. Let's just do it now. But anyway, fucking uh, one of the cooler things at the end of the trailer is Mantis and Drax end up like flying to Earth to try to get Kevin Bacon for Star Lord and try to like bring him to him. So the trailer ends with them like breaking into Kevin. And Bacon's house, I and he's that. like, and he's like, "What are you doing?" And Drax is like, "Legendary actor Kevin Bacon." <laughs> it's like really funny. But yeah, I thought it was cool that they actually wrote it in a way that's gonna like you know play with the MCU storyline and stuff. So it's not just like a one off. It's yeah. not just a one-off. so. Shout out to James Gunn, and and not to to just his not only his movies. Peacemaker was also a really good series too. So James Gunn knows how to make uh, superhero movies, and he's gonna do great, great work. He really with does the DC. He really, really does. I'm very excited to see what that man does. Cool. Yo, I got something to talk about. If unless we're ending soon, we're soon. Yeah, what do you got? Yo, um, my yeah. cousins from Tennessee. They were like, "Hey, you want to buy popcorn to raise money for our school?" You're the only ten I see. Yeah, and I, <laughs> I, I was like, "Yeah, sure." And they gave me the link, but it sent me to this like Walgreens kind of website, and I was like, "This isn't popcorn." Did you get what hacked again? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, it was from my aunt. <laughs> And um, your aunt's in on it, bro. She's right? having a hard time. <laughs> she needs the money. So she was like, "Oh shoot, no!" So she learned. She called the school about it the next day. And if you're sending the link to people from out of states, they get transferred to a different website where it's just like random goods. And I was like, "Oh, so they I, they had like kitchen supplies and like bathroom utensils, like all these like things." So uh, I picked up these gummy these jelly beans that are like. They taste like ice cream and Snapple flavors, if you want to try them. But it might be too long. We'll try them upstairs. You mean you could just bust them out while we do jam and yam? We could. <laughs> so Yo. we got Cold Stone flavored jelly beans, and we got Snapple flavors. I didn't even know the Snapple has existed. Yo, crazy. And so this is what? This is Jelly Belly? Why don't you crack that open? Why don't you crack that open? And we'll swing it over to jam and yam. Try to be quiet. Jerry, music. Jerry, try to be quiet while they do the jam. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> all right. Let me give you. Let me give you a quick a flavor. Yeah, let's, let's do this a quick is actually rundown. Cool. Yeah, let's do a quick flavor right now before we. All right. So, hop into this. so here we got the Jelly Belly. We got the Cold Stone Creamery flavor. It comes with five different flavors. We got just. Let me just give you a quick name. Like, we got a chocolate one. We got a strawberry one. We got a apple pie vanilla one. We got a mint chocolate chip one, and there's a birthday cake one. Oh shit. Yeah, nice. That I, and good. for the Snapple one, we got a fruit punch, mango, cranberry, raspberry, pink lemonade, and kiwi strawberry. Please, please, please eat away from the microphone. Thank you very much. <laughs> exactly. We don't, we don't need a replication of the pizza episode recently. <laughs> and anyway, uh, my jam of the week is going to go to a song that I've been jamming to all week, and that is a song called Tub Surfing by an artist named Real Live Animals. It's a really good jam. We were listening to it upstairs. We were. It's actually really it good. It is actually really good. And honestly, I had mad jams to pick from like 14. But that one, I mean, it's just I got to stay true to the muse, you know? So, mm-hmm. tub surfing, real live animals. Nice. I've been, I'm in the same boat. I've been listening to a lot of music because of like uh, midterms and projects and all of that. Uh, I will say that this song really caught me off guard. The name of the song is I Want You Back by Abandoned by Bears. Uh, It is the same I Want You Back by the Jackson 5. It is a pop punk cover. They're screaming vocals. It's it's absolutely wonderful. That's fire. Yeah. Uh, I came back home from work, and I really didn't want to do any of my my college work. And I just put on music, and Motion City Soundtrack Capital H played. And I had so much fun in a long time. Probably because I've been like on a huge hiatus of music from when we were young. But that song played, and I was just like headbanging in my kitchen and just like procrastinating doing things and just singing and i was like damn this 
This was fun. So Motion City Soundtrack, Capital H. Fire. All right. So this is actually a jam, I believe. Oh, and uh, I don't know if we said it on the, like, I don't know if it's been featured as oh, a jam. Oh, shit. Though. I'll tell you right now. It is um, original by Bad Rabbits. What happened? Original by Bad Rabbits. Oh, that is a jam. Oh, that's a fire song. That is a fire song. That's a good song. I don't yeah, think it's I know ever that song too. Is that the one that I like? There's another Bad Rabbit song that I like a lot. I don't think it's that one though. It's yeah, the one with the music video where they're in, they're driving in a car. I've never seen the music video for either, any uh, other songs, but I'll look it up. I didn't know their their lead singer is black. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's dope. All right. I don't know. I just had one of those chocolate ones, and the shit was fire. I had like a hint of coconut <laughs> or something. I had the strawberry. It was right. Nice. Those are freaking crazy. Ugh. Thank you for uh, for watching us here at the Joystick Show. I just mm. realized I had a whole thing I wanted to talk about, but I'll leave it for next week because I want to talk more in depth about it. If I'm being honest. And uh, other than that, and Johnny Depp. Thanks for watching us here at episode 113 of the Joystick Show. Hey. Like I mentioned at the beginning, it'd be very helpful if you could like this episode. And if you could subscribe to Team Joystick, which Correct. is us, the people who helm the Joystick Show. Yeah, we host it. Uh, you know, get, just to give you something to comment, what superhero movie have you enjoyed this year? They've made a bunch of them. Mm. I think that's something we could throw in there. Mm-hmm. And, and if, not, uh, right. and if like, you don't have anything to comment there, who's your favorite emo band? Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. Were they at when we were young? Are they going to be at the next one? Mm-hmm. Probably not. <laughs> 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 Solid chance, but you know, who, who'd they be? I'm, I'm, I'm a... Fall Out Boy panic kind of guy. So. Yeah. By the way, Paramore, I've been on a binge lately. Solid. Very solid. They were there too. So uh, for all of us here at Team Joystick, I've been Bobby Rosario. And um, you've been? Yeah, it's I'm, a man. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs>